many things can be quantified on the baseball field. Some things are not. Notice I didn't say they cannot, I say they are not. Baseball is an individual sport offensively, but a team sport defensively. We tend, though, to try to quantify defensive metrics to the individual, add them all up, and call that team defense. That's not actually team defense. So we were wondering all the time, why does this good team not look good right now? Why does this mediocre team keep winning? Perhaps, I'm saying perhaps, team coordination is one of the answers. Let's do a little digging in. Remember the Baltimore Orioles in the Buck Showalter years, a couple of years back, always overperforming their their projected record. I got a clue as to why when I was with the Orioles in spring training. I was with them in camp for a while. They practiced hard. They practiced relays constantly. Fundamental defense. They also had Manny Machado come up, but they stuck with the very baseball-y J.J. Hardy at short. They had Adam Jones in center, Nick Markakis in right. They were smart. They were better on the field than they were on paper. That team in 2014 won 96 games. They won the AL East over the more powerful Yankees. You might remember the Seattle Mariners two years ago. They had a negative 51 run differential. But when you saw them play on the field, you knew you were watching a good team. They were known for their bullpen that helped them win 33 one-run games, the most in baseball that year. But they were tight defensively. J.P. Crawford there at short. Dylan Moore up the middle. Veteran Kyle Seeger at third. Mitch Hanniger in the outfield. They were baseball-y, as we call it, meaning they played tight. They didn't give you extra bases. They rarely got sloppy. Now, some of that's in the defensive metrics, of course. J.P. Crawford, J.J. Hardy, the two shortstops we're talking about, the pivotal guys, they had superior numbers defensively. But it was more than that. You saw it when you watched them. So this year, we now have five playoff teams from last season that are now at 500 or with a losing record. Five of them. Two of them spent big in the offseason, and they've still sputtered out of the gate. And when you watch some of those teams, you will see a lack of sharpness on the field. So I'm going to show you an example, just a random game this weekend where you can see the little things mean a lot. It's the Padres, one of the malaise teams we're talking about, and the Rays, the club with the best record in baseball. I'm not picking on these two clubs. I'm just saying this thing exists. I was watching on Saturday. Saturday, fifth inning. No score. Well-pitched game both sides. That's Blake Snell. Bouncer to first. Jake Cronenworth, that was a nice play, but Snell did not break for first. He was not there in time. That's a mental mistake. He's not there. Rays get a free base runner. Later in the inning, after a strikeout and a walk, double play ball to Xander Bogarts. Now, he's having a good fielding year, but nah, he couldn't get that out of his mitt. Couldn't convert the double play. Wander Franco stole second right after that. Rays had a chance to get that run and break through. Snell, though, who had 12 strikeouts, struck out Harold Ramirez to end the inning. No damage done. But again, there was a threat. Now, I want to point out, in that sequence, there were no errors assessed in that inning. Two poorly executed plays led to a chance for the Rays. Snell got out of it. But those plays barely registered. It's called a single and a fielder's choice. But it almost led to some runs. Team baseball right there, not very good. Two strikeouts in the inning. Blake Snell, he pitched great. Padres escaped. Bottom of the inning. How many times do I tell you how good Hassan Kim is? It's got to be every show. Look at this bunt. It's beautiful. Kim with a clean base hit. He's in. After that, Trent Grisham is in a bunting mood. He's going to get a pretty big break here. Oh, man, I, I, that's some bunt. So, but anyway, it's first and second. Nobody out for the Padres. So next up, I don't like Fernando Tatis bunting next, but I have to say, I like him wanting to do team things. He's slugging 600. I'd let him swing. Juan Soto's on deck. He should be swinging. But I like that Tatis is looking to help with something small. There's no score, and the win probability is, in fact, improved by getting guys to second and third. Now, here's this play. Soto with the shot to Jose Siri in center field. He has no shot at ha Sung Kim. He's way too fast. That ball was 322 feet deep. But he throws to the plate. Instead, Trent Grisham goes to third base, advancing. Kim was going to score anyway. From there, now you have a man on third. As we know, there's lots of ways to score from third base that you can't score from second. Isak Paredes couldn't quite handle it. And the run scores. If that runner's on second, he does not score. Instead, he goes in, he scores. It's a 2-0 ball game, and that is the final. It did not have to be that way. And I want to point out, once again, no errors were assessed in that inning either. There were two bad defensive plays, but in the books, three infield hits and a fly ball. Two runs score. Why? Ball thrown to the wrong base. Ground ball was botched. 2-0. That's the final. 
relays matter. Team coordination matters. Throwing to the right base, the right guy covering that base, the right guy backing up. The Rays, by the way, had a sloppy series over the weekend. It shows. You can hit and pitch your way out of trouble. The Rays are doing that, but they did lose two out of three. And in playoff baseball, an extra base can lead to a run, lead to a loss, lead to an early exit. Team coordination, team sharpness is tougher to quantify and gauge, but it absolutely does matter.